Next appeal comes from Calordlan in County Kerry, where the entire community was left shocked by the murder of one of the town's most popular characters, James Catalan. James was 58 years old when he was found dead. He left behind grieving work colleagues, brothers and sisters, a son and a daughter. They have all contributed to this appeal. The town of Calorglin in County Kerry has never got over the death of James Cahillan. He was a giant of the community, a community where five years after he died, his friends and his family remember him every day. Local butcher Michael Cahillan was his nephew. He'd always call into the shop, sat down on the bench, had the crack for five or ten minutes, look for some bit of mischief. I mean, if James had to walk from one end of the town, it could take James four or five hours because he knew, he knew everyone and he always had plenty of time for everyone. In my eyes, he was perfect. Just like all my brothers, I had six brothers. But he was a very gentle kind of guy. Anybody who needed anything or wanted a few bob or anything like that, James was there. It's not just his family who knew his generous nature. James worked here at Fexco, one of Calorglan's biggest employers, where James was loved by his colleagues. I had the good fortune to meet uh, James um, pretty much, so I'd say, within the first week of being here. Um, and to say he was friendly would be an understatement, to say the least. Um, he really just kind of opened his arms to anybody who kind of came to town. James is probably one of the best-known characters in Calorglan. Everybody in Calorglan no matter who they are, knew James, whether they're young or old, they, uh, they all knew him, they all had the crack with James. He loved every person, every walk of life, uh, from people, directors here in the company, to people drawn to all or farmers that he met inside in pubs or whatever. Uh, he was just a gent. Then, on the 18th of April 2012, the news that no one could quite believe. Neighbours of James had rang me and said, um, place is on fire, like, huh? So, shock, of course, hopped in the car and we arrived in places ablaze, like, you know? Um, we were informed on the night that definitely James was inside. You know, that was a horrific night, like, it was shocking, you know? Uh, stuff you think would never happen to your own family, like, huh? It was right on our doorstep. I got a phone call in the middle of the night, and I didn't believe it, and I said, I'll ring you back. I'm going to his house, and I drove up. And unfortunately, what I met was unbelievable. It'll always stick in my memory. James's house had burned to the ground. His body was found within the rooms. Your initial reaction is what? You know, you can't just quite get your head around it. And then we came in to work the next day and we were all just in a daze trying to get our heads around what happened and why. The news of James's death stunned the town, but worse was to come. Here we were waiting to do, get the rosary on James, and they postponed it because they found uh, the bruising on his body and on his brain. He was hit in the head with a hammer, you know. Can you believe that? There was foul play there. And I thought, how could that happen, you know? My brother James, how could that happen? James had been murdered, and then his home set alight. When we heard it was a murder, it was just unbelievable because um, you're saying who in the right mind could possibly, you know, murder a man like James? Five years on, no one has been brought to justice for killing James Cahillan, and his friends and family are left longing for answers whilst living with his memory every day birthday party, communions, confirmation. We all get down to the same conversation. It's just, we just talk about James. They're not happy anymore. Even with, you know, the communions and the confirmations, all I can think about is where's James at it all. good relationship like really just a very easy man to get on with as a father as well always very supportive and he always thinks the best of, of me he always thought the best of Lisa and um, 
just had a very positive outlook on life and on his kids as well. Not only did Gary and Lisa lose their dad, James himself lost out on being a grandfather. He loved children, and he was always really good at me and Gary when we were growing up, so it, it, it does sadden me that she'll never get to meet him, and, and she won't be in his life, or he won't be in hers. You know, I grew up here, and everything reminds me of him now. Um, it's, it's really hard not having him around. James was loved by the people of Calorglan, but the answers to explain his murder may very well lie within this close community. It's horrible to think that somebody in our local community did this, and we want answers. And... The answers lie within um, a small group of people. Um, so there, the information is out there. Um, we just need people to come forward with it. It's never too late to come forward. And, and he, di he didn't deserve to go like this. And we just, we really want some answers so we can have some sort of closure on this. Well, we'd like to thank everybody who took part in that appeal. And really, it's very clear that James is still sorely missed in Calorglan. Uh, John, you're in charge of this investigation. We, we heard so many people there saying that this is um, a local issue, that the answer lies locally here. It's a very complex investigation and very frustrating. It's five years now since James was killed. Yes, Keelan, we certainly share the sense of frustration uh, being experienced by the family and uh, we're most anxious to progress this investigation of conclusion. In the past five years, we have been thoroughly investigated approximately 500 lines of inquiry. We have taken almost 300 statements. So this day, I, I agree with what the family said. We do believe that the answer lies within the local community. We believe that there are people out there who have vital information and for some reason or another haven't yet come forward. So you really would be appealing to those people tonight to think again? Absolutely, I absolutely am appealing tonight. Even use the confidential line, I will be here until after the show. After the show, I will take the cause personally and we will treat those people very sensitively. And John, now you have an image with you. It's an image of a distinctive type of hammer. Talk me through this image and why this is important. Yes, if you look at the screen there and concentrate on the head of that hammer. The head of a hammer was found in close proximity to where James's body was found in the house during the forensic examination. We are absolutely satisfied that the hammer was, not, was foreign to the scene and that the, ham the handle was burnt of it. But if you concentrate on the head of the hammer, it's called a ball pain hammer. And it was unique. They're not widely used now. Tradesmen don't use them anymore. Yeah, normally there'd be what, a claw on one end of the hammer, but Correct. it's set as the, the, the They right. used to be used by uh, maintenance of farm machinery on metal workshops. They're, they're rare now. So what are you appealing for in relation to this hammer? Somebody may miss that hammer from a workshop, from their house, from their toolkit. Maybe just check, is that hammer missing from your house, from your toolkit, from your shed? And if so, contact us. Okay. It may be a vital link for us. Okay, so any information about that hammer? Any information about that hammer. And just to reiterate, you're saying that the information you believe is in the local area and that you and your team are here tonight to take anyone's call on that. Very much so. I totally agree with the family. I firmly believe I'm involved almost five in five years since this investigation has started that the answer lies within the community. And you, you could see how much it would mean to the Catalan it family. Would mean to they answer. need closure, they deserve closure. They're a decent, lovely family, as was James. Okay, well listen, John, thank you very much indeed for coming in to us with that. Now, if you do have any information you think may help the Gardaí, please get in touch. Here's Emma with the numbers.